blasting caps mixed with grenade fuses. And I wanted to take a crew in and do a demolition run. And I told uh, the, the captain that night when I got off of work, I said, hey man, we got to get rid of that stuff because it's 110 out there. And that stuff will go off. So I had some of my best men go down there to clean it up. And it happened. And when I got there, man, it, it was, it was uh, nothing but body parts everywhere. There was an orphanage I used to go to and uh, it was a Buddhist orphanage run by a Catholic priest. And then any of us that wanted to come could come and help. And I just love these kids. Towards the end of my, my, my tour, I get a call and uh, the orphanage has been shelled. And I went down there and there's just kids laying everywhere. And um, at that point, I just threw up my arms at God. And I just said, I, you know, I, I can't, I can't do this. I can't, I don't know what I believe anymore. I went to a funeral once, first funeral I ever went to where somebody's in a coffin and, and I'm looking at the person and I realized this is the first time I've seen a dead person that looks clean and in one piece, not burned up. You can't just put away your combat experience. You can't put away your childhood. You have your childhood and then you have combat. And, and when they collide, they make a big explosion. And that's what you're going through right now. They tell us one thing and then they change the rules and they don't give the people the proper tools. But they wouldn't do the right thing and you just watch it go on and on and on. I think one thing that stays with you, and it will not go away, ever, are the faces of the individuals you saw in Vietnam who were still alive, but they weren't going to make it. It was very hard when I came home. My, you know, my family told me, you know, what's, what's going on with you? You, you know, it's like, I'm not the same. You can't go through this and be the same. I said, but I don't know what that means exactly, but I know that I don't see the world like I used to at all. Everybody said that I was different, but I could, I didn't feel different. I didn't notice being different. I definitely had anger issues that I never had before, but I didn't recognize them. It took somebody else to tell me because I thought I was normal. My son has told me that he has been very proud of the fact that I served and that I was willing to do something that was uh, bigger than myself. I'm proud that I served. I love the guys that I served with and that's what made the difference. But uh, yeah, um, I wish I wish I hadn't gone. Whether you're a veteran or not, anybody that goes through some serious trauma, you know, loss of life or bad childhood or whatever, I've, I've come to the conclusion: pain is pain is pain. You're gonna have to deal with what's eating you. You're not gonna get better. It's gonna get worse. And as you get older, it gets even worse. So why not try it and find out you are not the only one? You don't have any idea what war is like till you're there. And fear is the primary. You are so scared, I remember the first time when we took incoming, they said, hit the dirt. I was already there, <laughs> you know, and <laughs> I mean, I was. And what I was doing while I was in the dirt, 
I was praying. As a combat medic, I was 18 years old when I went to Vietnam. I went over there because I wanted to serve. I wanted to be a medic. I wanted to save lives and so on. And the stuff that I saw was just uh, uh, burned into my memory. Because, you know, we are boys. We are young people. I was raised in the church. And we get taught to do things that are the ugliest things on earth. I had never done a group therapy anything before this. Um, not that I was ever afraid of it, but I never, I guess, never saw a need or wasn't given the opportunity. I had done, you know, kind of one-on-one -on -one counseling and kind of things like that. And then when it came up, I knew I wanted to get something different. When I first got there, I didn't, I didn't say anything. I just listened. But the more I listened, the more I was hearing about me. We had Vietnam vets that hadn't dealt with things that, you know, were plaguing them daily. Even one that every time we came in, he was surprised that he was still there and he hadn't killed himself by that. By just saying, okay, I'll try it once, I was hooked. These people are sharing things that are so intimate and so from the heart. It tears me apart sometimes. When I got to the group and listened to them reveal things that they wouldn't discuss with other people, that pulls it down in me as well. The fact that we're able to, in that group, share, and you don't know what you're going to share sometimes. And some people say, well, I'm going to share this, but I'm not going to share that. But then all of a sudden, other people are sharing that have had similar experiences as you have. It helps connect because it brings back that cohesiveness that the military brings in when you go into the service. And they train you, you know, to rely upon each other and have each other's backs. It gave me guys that that shared openly and honestly, which in turn made me share openly and honestly. Because knowing they can share this stuff, and then knowing that there are people who will help them to understand exactly as what, what's going on up here and in here, I think, yeah, it will help them considerably and it will take them over that hump. You know, I'm not afraid, you know, and I'm not ashamed. What I realize is that I'm not alone in this. That other guys have gone through this and they've shared what they've gone through. And those things that they shared is what made a difference to me. There's no need to carry guilt for something you can't control. We live life. How do we honor the dead? They leave us before their time or whatever. Live it. The best thing to come out of that group was that one individual that in Vietnam was so terrorized and every day was thinking about ending it. Near the end, he came in with a stack of contact cards and passed them out to us. So in case we wanted somebody to talk to. To me, that told me that this guy's willing to stay around. Not that he's just here for us, but he has seen uh, a way forward. He's seen hope. I recommend the More Injury Group wholeheartedly. It is about an investment in oneself. I'm telling you, if you're thinking about it, do it. You'll be amazed and you'll be surprised of the relief you will get. But don't take my words, sit in the chair. You don't have to say a word. Just, just come to a meeting, sit in the chair. You'll see for yourself how far I can take you.